Um, and for today's IPM Minute, we'll be talking about uh, identifying sources of clothes moths. Um, we thought that this topic would be relevant at this time of year because now people are spending a lot of time indoors and they may see um, a moth flying around and, and try and figure out where are they coming from and how best to manage them. So I wanted to first start with um, the ecological perspective on these critters. Um, they are natural organisms that are occurring outdoors around our environments all the time. And the typical setting that they are um, living in and performing ecological functions is when an animal dies. So here we have an example, you know, um, a deer encounter on a highway, that animal dies. Um, there's a lot of organisms that come in and break down uh, the body and especially the internal components. Um, but once the carcass is dry, that's when these critters come in. So we have our clothing moth, our beetles, of a wide variety that break down the keratin that's found in some of these dry parts like hair. And they eventually um, return this to soil. So all part of the circle of life, except when it comes into your home. Mm -hmm. So from the pest management perspective, um, these guys are feeding on keratin containing products. And this includes things like animal hides, hairs, uh, feathers, horns, so products that we have indoors like silk, leather, and wool are all animal-based and all target uh, feeding for these critters. And in the case of clothing moths, um, they bite off fi fibers, they chew on the stump, and then they move on. So what we see is like a, a trail of damaged fibers. Um, and this is often found in places that are dark and protected, um, such as under furniture, um, in, when clothing is found in closets, particularly underneath collars and the folds of cuffs. So they want to be protected and they want to be in a dark location. Um, some things are not clothing moths that we find and people are very upset about. So if the clothing item in question is something that is composed of plant fibers like cotton or synthetic fibers, is often a manufacturing defect, um, a snag on a buckle or a belt that is causing the tiny hole. And there's a, a, the picture on the right is a reference to a blog post that has thousands of comments of people that have a hole right above their belly button. And it's from leaning up against a counter while doing food prep. And that's creating a hole from wear and tear against uh, a buckle of, of jeans. So. Um, there's a number of causes that are not clothing moths, so just finding a hole in clothes does not mean that you're dealing with that particular pest. The one caveat for um, materials that are plant-based like cotton is if it's heavily soiled. So in instances when a t-shirt, for example, is your favorite gym t-shirt, you wear it all the time, the armpits are heavily stained um, with oil secretions, that may be attractive to clothing moths feeding. So they, they would consume that and leave holes in that item. So um, there are instances, but it's very rare that plant-based materials be, are chewed by these pests. The main ways that we identify the pest um, is through their evidence. So that could be the chewing of particular fibers. Um, you see in this picture on the right, the webbing and feces that are left behind from the webbing clothes moth. Um, in rare cases, you may actually see the larva, which is this uh, cream colored uh, insect on the upper left, and they have a reddish or blackish head capsule. But most times they're really hard to see because they have these feeding tubes that are composed of the fibers of the food material that they're eating. So they blend in really well, um, avoiding detection. Um, when people start to get concerned is when they see the adult moths flying around. And it's important to note that there are a number of moths that can be found indoors. A lot of them are pantry moths that are associated with food items. Um, we had a previous presentation by Jody talking about those pantry moth pests. Um, so the, the way that we differentiate these clothing moths is by these orange um, spiky hairs on top of their head on the adult moth and then the fringe at the end of the wings. So that's, that's one feature that can be used. Um, in order to find where they are living, we wanna con 
conduct a detailed inspection, um, we want to think about those potential sources in the home, the animal-based fibers, whether it's a carpet that we have, a particular piece of clothing, a blanket. Um, we want to really take a close look at those items and potentially, um, if they're not in use, perform some kind of treatment on them, whether it's dry cleaning or doing your own kind of cleaning to remove any moth evidence and then store them securely. Um, we want to make sure that we're looking for pest evidence in those dark and undisturbed places that are particularly attractive to them um, and consider some non-traditional sources. So I'll show a few pictures next about dead animal sources that are often contributing to clothing moth infestations indoors. One of the techniques that is really useful is monitoring, and there are a variety of pheromone traps available to um, attract the male moths to the lure. This is particularly informative for detection. It is not a management technique because it only attracts the males. Um, and this picture I should note is um, an Indian meal moth trap, but it's the same, same concept of attracting males with a lure. Um, there are some things to consider when it comes to monitoring is that these lures can attract other species. In this case, um, the tan moths are the target, but this brown dotted moth um, is something that lives outdoors and in bird nests and can be attracted to indoor areas when there's too much pheromone used. So here's the other sources um, in you know, buildings where people are managing rodents and then forget about them or they die in walls. The carcasses left behind can be a source for these moths to feed on. Um, so it's certainly something to keep in mind when we're trying to identify sources. Um, again, some just real quick management information. Um, prevention is the key. We want to make sure that we're um, isolating items that are potential food sources for these pests um, and keeping them away from any activity indoors. So that was your quick IPM minute on uh, COVID.